This is a prophetic update for the 7th of October 2024. Today's the one year anniversary of the supernova attack in Israel that started this current war that we're engaged in at the moment. It is also Putin's birthday today. So significant that that attack fell as a gift to him on his birthday to drag the West into a expanded regional and global conflict on the back of the supernova festival attack which was shocking a year ago we were absolutely gutted by the images we saw of shani Locke and the others at the festival who were gunned down as they ran away from hang gliding terrorists coming in the survivors of that attack made some interesting testimonies a particular fellow from one of the communities on the border he commented that the state of Israel during that attack had completely failed in every respect to respond to the emergency. So when people ran for their lives with the emergency warning that they were under attack to their safe houses, they spent 12 hours before any help arrived to those villages. So not only was the border penetrated, which is extraordinary in Israel, being so fortified and defended with modern weapons against a, a really um, underdeveloped state of Palestine, but also the response to the emergency came 12 hours late and by that stage people had been killed in their safe houses this one fellow had lost his son and his wife and he'd been shot himself while they were in their bunker through the window and his comment was that the state completely failed in its duty to protect the citizens another fellow who had been held up in a, a container perhaps uh, escaping from the supernova festival during that attack he commented he, he survived under the, the bodies of people who died on top of him that the weapons that were used toxic gases and grenades that were thrown into the space where they were sheltering were um, unusual aggressive sophisticated weapons that, that they were attacked with those days and it was a relentless attack there was waves one or two waves at least of forces that came to destroy men women and children and to publicize it across the media with media on standby to amplify the terror and that's the nature of terrorism the fear that's generated from you know symbolic attacks and death violence etc extreme attacks is political leverage to gain power for the cause whatever that cause might be and so in this case Playing the victim card is a big part of the manipulation and propaganda that's going on at the moment. I was in the city of Sydney last night and there's a number of police around on Sunday afternoons after the pro-Palestine protests because they're quite nervous about those protests becoming inflamed and out of control in the city amongst a multicultural population who do not all support that cause. The arguments in these protests are nuanced. They're not all proposing the same thing. Some of the people are, are defending the humanitarian interests of children and women in Gaza, Palestine. Um, others are extreme people, you know, they're, they're terrorist interest and they've been chanting terrorist slogans. So there's a mixture of people amongst those crowds. And that's also being reflected in the way that Netanyahu is addressing Iran and has also today paused his response, even though he's continuing to fall under attack he has paused his response to the attacks from Iran and is waiting because the consequence is if he goes in heavy-handed and starts to blow up Iranian facilities there will be millions of people who will die and so he is waiting until he can make an informed and strategic decision about whether they will target military um, nuclear facilities power etc but nonetheless there's a humanitarian con consequence when war begins in your nation and so Netanyahu has been messaging the Persian people and saying to them that he hopes for the future to be prosperous and peaceful with the Persians whom Israel has shared a long relationship of friendship the tradition of Persia is not the tradition of the oppressive Islamic State that currently govern over and keep that nation in poverty so there's a great resistance at the grassroots in in Iran that does not agree with the state administration the form of government that are currently keeping them oppressed so um, the defense minister of Israel has said that they could just as easily 
raise Iran as they've done to Gaza. And we also have the Prime Minister of Lebanon responding and saying that he opposes the attacks and the invasion of Israel, but he is a puppet, really. His hands are tied and his life is at risk of ending if he doesn't speak the words that he's given to speak on behalf of the terrorist organisation Hezbollah, who really control the government in Lebanon, which is, is almost a failed state. It's become so dysfunctional and poor that it really he has no power influence at all in Lebanon. We have Pakistan claiming they're going to join BRICS this week and also a terrorist attack outside the Karachi airport targeting Chinese officials that are traveling toward Pakistan for a summit on the 15th and 16th uh, Shanghai Corporation Organization Summit regarding China and their influence in Pakistan. They're investing in the Belt and Road Initiative through West Asia into the Middle East and so are these countries are uh, involved in heavy Chinese investment and uh, economic interests in their nation. So a year on from supernova, there is a lot of political propaganda messaging going on and it's becoming clearer who is who and who's playing what role in this season. Viktor Orban in Hungary has said to the EU he's defying orders to open his borders. Hungary closed their borders earlier before the Syrian migration came into Europe and he's been threatened with 200 million euro fines and he said that he will bus the migrants back to Brussels to EU headquarters rather than open his borders. So he's attracting a lot of, uh, a lot of heat from the European Union. Uh, Iran has struck Haifa with missiles that have been able to pierce the air defences of Israel. We have also agricultural incentives in the UK are being reported to be incentivising no food production just by the nature of the financial arrangements that the government's making and offering toward farmers. It's more profitable for the farmer not to plant food crops in the UK. This season for the next three years they're being offered £440 per acre per year to plant bird and seed feed and go back to nature. That's what's happening in the UK. So there'll be food production issues and um, price spikes, problems coming down the track with famine because of these policies that are being implemented to incentivize the environment over the needs of human populations. Russia and China, the propaganda is continuing and this aligns with the prophecies in Ezekiel 38 and 39. It says that Russia, who's referred to as Gog, the chief prince, also Daniel, he's referred to as the eighth king. He achieves what his forefathers could not achieve and by intrigue and deception, he takes the throne and takes nations territories that his forefathers were never able to achieve and he worships the god of fortresses and war. This is Russia playing their hand now and destabilizing western nations through cultural subversion, the de-dollarization is economic warfare, demoralization, drawing them into war to empty the coffers, resources and eventually defeating western nations to transfer them into the system of government that has been preferred, uh, prepared in advance like a cake baked in the oven to shift us all into a global system which is the first beast, the second beast and China over the top. So the whole system works together even though it looks like there's two sides, Western Europe and the Russian-Iran axis and China playing both sides, they actually work as a, a whole system bringing in the one world currency and the mark of the beast. That's what's happening at the moment and Russia is playing their role but the prophecy speaks about Russia being judged as the Spirit of God brings Russia around against Israel and all the hordes with them. It's a judgment against Gog. So what we're going to see is the gathering forces, militarization of Russia and the hordes coming toward Israel and then they will be defeated and it calls in scripture this period a feast for the birds um, that gives glory to God and shows his power over all creation.